Uh, so a great shelter for the winter is the Morskohansky Super Shelter. And Morskohansky was a wilderness survival specialist. He specialized in the boreal forest up in Canada. And a lot of the things that he came up with are really applicable to any place that has cold weather like this. In the Adirondacks, it's applicable. In Maine, where we're at now, it's applicable. Uh, so the Morskohansky Super Shelter Basically what he did was instead of just in court having a tarp and then having a kind of a, uh, a bedding to lay on and then blankets, what he did was create kind of a greenhouse effect. So you still have the tarp, you still have a raised bed to keep you up off of the ground. But what he did was actually put a mylar reflective blanket on the inside so they could take advantage of reflecting some of the radiant heat from the fire down onto you while you're sleeping or in the shelter. And then on top of all of that, he would put some plastic. And what that plastic did was essentially create kind of a greenhouse effect on the inside of the shelter. And it, was, it would still allow radiant heat from the fire to go inside, but then it would kind of trap that warm air inside. So what you have is a, a really a superior shelter for extreme cold weather conditions. And I say that extreme cold weather, you can use it in cold weather, but a lot of times, you know, this thing gets so warm, so much warmer than the outside temperature that you almost can't stand it unless it's extremely cold outside. But this is kind of a take on that, the original Moore's Kahansky Super Shelter. What it has is it's got a raised bed, and that raised bed is made of a series of logs that are stacked on top of each other, and you kind of create a crib effect that's then filled with conifer boughs or whatever type of duff or whatever type of bedding you have. And that that kind of log cabin structure that you put here, that crib effect that you made, keeps all of that contained in, even in the night when you're laying on it and sleeping. And this actually incorporates, this is kind of a no cordage option, this is kind of a more bushcraft style option, it's more traditional to what he would do. Uh, it's a series of kind of bendable, flexible branches that you can kind of stick inside that bedding and arch that up. And what that does is create a nice dome. So with the reflective blanket on the inside and that plastic over the top, the air as it's warmed in here is kind of trapped and circulates in this dome. And it really is a really extremely warm shelter configuration. So if you've got the time and you've got the resources, this is a great thing to do because you can create the structure for your tarp system out of natural materials. So this is a good cordage free option if you have the time. If you don't have this type of thing, you don't have these type of resources, a kind of more, uh, I will say modern take, although it's not really modern, uh, a different take that you can have depending on the resources you have is what I've built over here. It uses the same concept as everything that we have here. We've still got the bedding. We created that crib bedding by stacking it in, up in log cabin fashion. Created that crib. And we put the conifer boughs inside. In this case, I'm using white pine because I like the white pine. The needles are a lot more soft. And within that structure, when I'm building this bed, I like to lay my initial layer kind of short ways, kind of cross ways in that bedding. Then the next layer that I put on top of that will be long ways. And then my final layer, I'll continue that kind of layering concept all the way up for as high as I want it to go. But my last layer, I always make sure the last layer is short ways, the cross ways, because when I lay on it, I want it to kind of bend with me. If they're long ways, when I lay on it, they'll just kind of split and move out of the way. And that's not what I want. So regardless of how many layers you put on this, you always want to finish with the thatching, if you will, going crossways on here. So the bedding's the same. In the original, and we used a lot of natural resources here to kind of weave this dome. What I've done here is create that structure. This particular one goes more in line with the stuff that I'm normally carrying, my 25 foot rapid ridge line uh, and the reflective tarp slash blanket that I always carry. I basically created structure by making these two bipods. And these two bipods are just made with a shear lash, a two pole shear lash on both sides. And then what I've done is taken that ridge line, that initial bowline that's on the end of that ridge line, I've attached that to a stake 
down on that end. And that basically becomes a guy line for that bipod, which comes up. I've taken one of the Prusik loops and I've draped it over one of the sections of the bipod. And the ridge line actually goes through the crook that's made by that bipod. The ridge line continues all the way across and goes through the crook of this bipod. I took another Prusik loop, draped it over the top here, and I can slide those Prusiks along that ridge line to keep that tight. And that gives these artificial structures, basically, uh, some stability. Then from there, the rest of the ridge line travels down to another stake. On that stake, I just did a Marlin spike hitch so that I could adjust the tension on it, and it drove that stake into the ground. And that makes a pretty solid structure. So this is another way to provide structure, just like this is a way to provide structure. And the, the benefit of those if you, is if you don't have two trees that are spaced apart like you want them to be so that you can put your ridge line up, you can just create that artificial structure and use these shear lashed bipods in place of those trees. So this is another option to use, another thing to put in your skills kit bag. And of course, I just did a, a typical lean-to, just like I would in any other season, off of this ridge line. From there, I took the plastic. This is a 9 by 12 sheet of plastic. I believe this one is a fairly thick mill because I reuse it all the time. But I've done them in, with as little as a 0.3 mil plastic. It's just a 9 by 12 plastic drop cloth. I drape that from the back. In the back, I pin that down with snow. Bring that over the top. And then I let the other part hang down. And this is rolled up right now so that I can talk about and show you the bedding. But normally this would be unrolled and laying directly down, flat down, just like it would be over on this one. Your plastic comes over and creates a flat face on the front of the shelter. And that really allows that radiant heat to go in, hit that reflector, and continue around. Same thing over here. Radiant heat goes through the plastic, hits the reflector, and you kind of have kind of that dead air space in here that's continually being warmed and it's trapped in there. And it really does get extremely warm inside these shelters. When that plastic comes over the top, I drape it down. All the excess is towards the front and I roll all of that up onto about a one and a half to two inch diameter pole that fits across the front of it. And I like to have these Y-shaped sticks kind of on standby because as you'll see, these things get extremely warm. Sometimes I want to get up and I need to either vent some of that out because it's getting too warm in there or I need to stoke the fire in the night. So I like to be able to kind of roll that up, set it inside those forks, handle what I need to handle, and then come back. Alternatively, what you can do with the ends is you kind of wrap the ends around the backside. You wrap those around towards the front and then you take the excess from the front and put those together, and then I'll take some bushcraft clothespins or something to that effect to kind of hold that together. I'll close off one end. I won't completely close it. I like to have some ventilation still. And then one other side here, I'll do kind of a different staking system or a different clothespin system to be able to come in and out of this way. But for me, it's a little bit difficult to go in and out of it through this side when I can just raise the front stake it up with a couple of fork sticks, crawl out, do what I need to do, crawl back in, and kind of lower the curtain, if you will, to kind of get going. So that's the concept. This is, you know, the more traditional style, and this is kind of a more modern take on it using the gear that I normally carry with me. It takes a little less time, a little less natural resources. Uh, so these are both great options for cold weather. Both of these shelters are best used with a long fire. Uh, when you think about it, when you're laying down, if you have kind of that traditional round fire, like a teepee fire lay or a log cabin or something to that effect, the further you get away from that fire, the warmth from that fire gets exponentially smaller. So if you have a long fire, the length of your body, the length of your shelter, then you're gonna get even heat in there. You know, if you have that one central fire, you'll probably be really hot towards the center and either your feet or your head gets cold and sometimes you have to choose which one you want to go with. With a nice long fire, you've got a nice even heat in your shelter. So these are the best way, this is the best type of fire to use in conjunction with this type of shelter. So that 
is the Morse Kohansky Super Shelter. Really great shelter for extreme cold weather conditions.